Good evening and welcome to this event organized by the Vidal Sassoon International Center for the Study of Antisemitism at the Hebrew University. My name is Professor Robert Wistrich. I'm the head of the center. We're very privileged this evening to have as our special guest His Excellency, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Romania, Dr. Mihai Razvan Ungurianu. I've been practicing that for several hours. <laughs> I would also like to add his wife Daniela is with him and the team of the Romanian Embassy, the Romanian Ambassador in Israel, Mariana Stoica, the Israeli Ambassador in Romania, Rodika Radian Gordon, the Ambassador of Chile, Sally Bendersky, distinguished Israeli diplomats, friends of the Hebrew University, and this audience as a whole. Welcome to this event. I'm now going to ask the Vice President of the Hebrew University, Professor Hervé Bercovier, to say a few words of introduction, and then I will introduce in more detail our distinguished guest for this evening. Professor Belkovier, please. His Excellency, our guest, uh, I'm pleased to welcome you here and the Monscopus. And I hesitated before I started to speak if I'll speak French or not, but uh, I'm sure that most of the people here in the assembly would have understand better my French probably than my English. But I will go on in English uh, for the few people who don't uh, have the knowledge of the French. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here, and it's also something which links us to science, this university. This university was founded by many uh, waves of immigration. One of them, the first main wave, was the German wave of professor, but we had also a wave of people coming from Romania. I won't speak about a field that I don't know, but I'm a microbiologist and I'm a former uh, pastorian. And uh, everybody knows that uh, uh, Romania was a leading country with France and Germany uh, in microbiology after one of the first uh, Romanians studied with Pasteur, came back to Romania, created his own institute. And this tradition of microbiology and clinical microbiology has continued for many, many years. And uh, I want just you to feel at home. You should know that our uh, Poker or speak women or uh, official uh, speaker of the uh, the Hebrew University, Irit Solutianu, her father, uh, just retired a few years ago, was a professor of immunology at Hebrew University and brought with him that tradition of classical microbiology. I won't speak about uh, medicine, but it's also true for medicine. We have a lot of our staff or senior staff who used to be trained, uh, were trained in Romania. So you can feel at home, the, the speakers here are the representative of our university, have a direct link with Romania. And I want just to finish on the one word uh, uh, which go back to my youth in France and the fact that I used to go and see Les Chaises of uh, Eugène, Eugène uh, Ionesco regularly uh, in that uh, small uh, theater in Paris. And really what I want just to say about uh, UNESCO, us, and uh, the new way that Romania has taken in the last few years, recognizing his past, is that what you're doing now, and now I'm speaking as a veterinarian that I am, uh, I'm sure that what you're doing now will prevent the process of rhinocerosization. You won't become rhinoceros anymore like uh, Eugene, uh, Eugene Ionesco has described that so well. And I hope this evening and this, your conference will just prove that I'm right. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Hervé. It's a great privilege to be able to introduce our distinguished guest uh, tonight. 
Dr. Ungurianu has been Foreign Minister of Romania since December 2004. And as you can see, he's a young man. In fact, he's only 36 years old, something of a diplomatic wunderkind. And he was born in the year 1968. When I realized that, a few curious thoughts crossed my mind. Because at the time when he was born, I was a young student on the barricades in Paris. And then one month before he was born, I found myself in Prague when the Soviet tanks came into that city in order to crush what was called at that time the Prague Spring. 1968 was a very special year. And so, Your Excellency, Your Excellency you are a 1968er. In French, they say un 68 ans with a very different connotation. It was a year where in the Middle East, of course, Israel was only fresh by less than a year from the Six Day War, which radically and completely transformed both the history of the Middle East and of the Jewish people. And we're still living with some of the unresolved consequences of that today. It was also a time in Poland where the remnants of the Jewish community of uh, the pre-war period were unceremoniously expelled or forced to leave their homeland. And it was also a time where Romania, despite the fact that it was under an authoritarian communist dictatorship, took an independent line, at least on two very important issues. One that concerns us here in Israel, that Romania was the country, the one country of the then Soviet bloc that did not cut off its diplomatic relations with the State of Israel. And secondly, in 1968, it was the country that did not join the Warsaw Pact forces that overran uh, Czechoslovakia. So even then, in spite of the many dark and unpleasant memories, I'm sure, of that period, that should be said for the historical record. Of course, today, Romania, post-communist Romania, faces a very different set of challenges. And as you all know, it is slated to join the European Union at the beginning of 2007, inshallah. And I think that that fact does have some sort of connection with the topic of tonight's lecture, in spite of the fact that seemingly it has no connection at all. Because the Romania that we see emerging today is really breaking new ground. And I think that it is very much oriented to Europe, and to the democratic West. And I think in the person of its foreign minister, we can and will see that very clearly. And one of the aspects which I think indicates that this is so is the willingness and the ability to face one's own history. And that indeed is not accidentally the title of tonight's lecture, or at least one aspect of the title, Facing History and Hebrew B'mifchana historia, facing history, Romania, and the Holocaust. Because the foreign minister is not only a diplomatic wunderkind, he's also, and I think even more remarkably so, a scholar of the people of the book, our people, Am HaSefa, an expert in Jewish studies, dedicated to the study of Jewish history. About how many foreign ministers can you really say that, looking around the world? I dare to say, I wonder, can we say it even here in Israel? <laughs> I should note that in the year 2004, Dr. Ungurianu, 
received his doctorate at the Faculty of History of the Kuzar University of Yash. And his subject was religious conversion and cultural integration within Romanian society at the beginning of the 19th century. And I'm very proud to be able to tell you that our center, the Vidal Sassoon Center, through its Felix Posen scholarships, was able to contribute to that doctorate because the foreign minister, the future foreign minister, twice was the recipient of a scholarship on this very topic that finally resulted in a doctorate. And we forgive you, foreign minister, because we know your doctorate was delayed through no fault of your own because of your diplomatic and political activities. So we forgive you and we are really proud that you are here and that we've contributed in some small way to this outcome because I think it's a wonderful thing that a scholar of Judaica should be the foreign minister of Romania and be contributing to the improvement of bilateral relations between Israel and Romania, between Jewish and Romanian scholars, and between Romania and the Jewish world. And in this context, despite his heavy burden as a foreign minister, I know that he is still dedicated to and involved as the creator and the director of the Center for Jewish Studies in the history faculty of Yash University. Before I pass on uh, the baton to my colleague and friend, Dr. Leon Volovici, himself a native of Romania, an expert on Romanian Jewish history, and somebody who was a member of the historical commission which is recently the International Commission of the Holocaust in Romania, which has now produced its final report. In fact, it's lying here on the table. The final report is over 400 pages. I'm sure Leon, who was a member of that commission, will have several things to say about it. And I'm sure that the foreign minister will also add his own comments. I will simply say, as many people in this room know very well, there was something between 280,000 to 380,000 Romanian Jews, Romanian Ukrainian Jews, who were murdered during the Holocaust. Murdered as a result of decisions and actions of civilian and military authorities in territories under Romanian rule. Equally, it is true there was a higher number of survivors in Romania than in any other East European or South East European state, but that number can never be forgotten. Some even consider it to be higher, up towards the 400,000 mark. And of course, for so many years, this terrible and tragic aspect of Romania's history and of the history of Europe was not faced up to, was not dealt with, neither in Romania nor in many other European countries. But in Romania, under communist rule, it was impossible to evoke this subject. There was a silence. There were taboos. And even in the immediate post-communist period, it was extremely difficult. There was a form of Holocaust denial, a refusal to accept any responsibility for this mass murder. And for a long time, the subject was evaded. Yet this report shows that we have moved into a new phase, one in which not only the chronology and the history of what really happened during the Holocaust in Romania of who did what to whom and when and how, but also questions relating to the Jewish 
issue as a whole, anti-Semitism, victims and perpetrators, moral responsibility, the political aspects. All this is now being confronted and taken seriously by the political elite in Romania who have accepted the independent judgment of historians and the implications of these findings. And we as a center of research at the Hebrew University that deals intensively with such themes are especially honored that you, Mr. Foreign Minister, Your Excellency, of your own volition, by your choice, agreed to come here and to speak on this very topic because if we're really going to move forward and to face the future, then indeed we have to face the past. I now uh, pass the mic to Leon Volovich, who will say a few words uh, and uh, introduce our guest. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robert. Uh, Dr. Mihai Razvan Ungureanu already succeeded to tell me before this meeting that he was very impressed by the warm atmosphere and sympathy he has received here by many people all categories, not only politicians, maybe mainly by all the people from, from Romania coming here in Israel and so on. <coughs> and I think that it was, it would be a very easy and comfortable to organize a debate on a topic connected to his Jewish history from 19th century, for example. And to to make a kind of very good and comfortable atmosphere of this meeting. Despite this, uh, Dr. Nguyano himself chose the most difficult subject, uh, Romania and the Holocaust. And I think that it's very significant for his uh, personality as a historian and for his personality as uh, a leading Romanian politician today. And I will try in a few words to, to explain, uh, to try to explain his attitude. Uh, I have now uh, Dr. Mihai Razvan Nguriano, not, not as a minister, but a historian, from his very beginning at the Faculty of History of the Yash University. In the early 90s, he was one of the first young Romanian historians, brilliantly acknowledged in the field of social history, the editor of a very innovative and substantial scientific historical journal. He was also one of the first Romanian historians to approach with courage and an open mind topics which had previously been ignored by traditional historiography or obscured by the official historiography by the communist, in the communist period. Among these topics are, first of all, those connected with the history of the Jews in Romania. Moreover, he decided to specialize in this field, as Professor Wistich explained, and became a student of Jewish studies in Oxford where he studied Hebrew and chose for his doctoral dissertation a topic largely connected with a very interesting chapter of the history of the Moldavian Jews. From the perspective of social history and mentality history. Dr. Ngurianu has taught Romanian Jewish history at the Bucharest University. He is the primary founder of the new Center for Jewish and Hebrew Studies at the Yash University, which is his university and my university. Jewish Romanian history also included, includes the dark chapter of the Holocaust period. And Dr. Mihai Resvan Ungurianu approached this chapter 
not only as a historian, but also with a clear sense of moral and intellectual duty. Both of us have participated in Romania in seminars for professors of history and schools on educating about the Holocaust and the history of antisemitism. I remember, for example, one of his lectures in which he proposed that Romanian teachers start their lessons on this topic from the concrete, tangible history of the Jews and their town, the history of the local Jewish community, what happened to the Jewish neighbors of their parents and grandparents during the period of uh, Antonescu, to explain how a normal coexistence turned into a nightmare of antisemitic legislation, pogroms, mass killing, and deportations. I believe that Mihai Razvan Ungureanu sees his involvement in this field and this educational activity as a kind of patriotic duty. And I will try to explain what I mean by this. The question of present day antisemitism and the specific forms of Holocaust denial in the Romanian press and in the public discourse was a frequent topic of debate in the Israeli and Western press and in the public declarations. Our center, the Dalsason Center, published papers and books and organized conferences on this topic. I think that one of the main sources for this phenomenon is an obsessive concern for the good image and good name of Romania and the Romanian people. For this reason, all the official propaganda efforts during the Ceausescu period and in the first decade after the fall of the communist regime have been to cover up and hide the truth, to mystify and exonerate the Romanian leaders of any responsibility for the crimes. Thus, we witness after the 1990s an extensive production of antisemitic materials, denying any Romanian responsibility, accusing the Jews themselves for their misfortunes. There were also opportunistic efforts of some political leaders to play an ambiguous game of formally accepting the truth in order to become an accepted member of the Western world, but at the same time to please or to socialize with nationalistic and anti-Semitic groups for electoral reasons. On the other hand, we must take into consideration that the development of different trends in the opposite direction, a rising number of young historians and graduate students who openly approach this chapter, who study and publish new research free of prejudice and prepare dissertations on Romanian antisemitism, on the Romanian chapter of the Holocaust, and on Jewish Romanian history in general. I'm sure that Dr. Jan Ancel, who is here today now and is the main specialist in the Holocaust in Romania, can confirm this. And also our Israeli ambassador, uh, Radika Gordon, which is very involved in supporting this pro process, can confirm the involvement of Mihai Nguriano as a historian and now also as a, as a minister. Mihai Razvan Nguriano was one of the first historians and now one of the Romanian political leaders to understand that a positive and true image of his country and his people cannot be the result of a cosmetic treatment of the past and of the dark chapters. On the contrary, it should be the result of a consistent effort to keep an open and comprehensive approach to these topics. We can see this approach also in his clear-cut reflections in the afterword he wrote for the report. 
and <clears throat> he strongly supported all the time because I was a member of this commission together with uh, Dr. Ancel, who was the main uh, contributor to this report. And uh, <clears throat> we know how he was involved before being minister as a historian to to uh, help the activity of the commission and now to implement the recommendation and the decision of this uh, report on the uh, Romanian chapter of the Holocaust. With this new perspective and new mentality, Mihail Zbanungurianu and several other historians and intellectuals represent, I think, the good and the true image of uh, Romania. Thank you. Too much about me. <laughs> so, it's you now. Okay. So. so now, this is the moment we have been waiting for. Our minister will come up here and speak for approximately half an hour, I understand. And uh, we will look forward to your words. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Professor Wistrick, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, I would just start by saying that I'm not responsible for what has happened in this world in 1968. I simply happened to be there. <laughs> Besides, I have another unpleasant example I should refer to. It is unpleasant simply because someone succeeded to become a Minister of Foreign Affairs after, after battling with police forces in the streets in 1968. You were there, you, were, you became an academic, Joschka Fischer became a Minister of Foreign Affairs. <laughs> But it, it gives me the great pleasure and above everything else, the honor of addressing you tonight on an issue which is not an issue of heart, it's very much an issue of consciousness. For those who, who think that discussing about the relation between Romania and the Shoah History should spell its word. For those who think that this subject is a mere matter of scientific interest, today I would say that what lies in my heart as a citizen of Yash, my hometown, goes beyond the simple meaning of words and the simple meaning of history as it is rewritten today. I'm happy that the publishers who gave a lot of, who put a lot of energy and strength into printing the final report have accepted my suggestion to put on the top of the first cover a picture describing in a lot, in less words than usual, that tragedy that ravaged the capital of Moldova back in 1941. This speech of mine is dedicated to those who lost their lives or lost their happiness in those very days, as it is dedicated to my hometown. It is with great pleasure that I stand now before you. I have to thank the organizers for all for inviting us here, and I do it full-heartedly. I have to say that for some time after I became Minister of Foreign Affairs, I started enjoying participating into conferences simply because the lavish introductions 
would give you a better image of myself <laughs> than I have. And I'm, I am, I'm sorry my mother is not here with you, simply because she's back at home. <laughs> As to give you an idea about what the plot is about, Leon Volovich, who said briefly that graduated the University of Yash, may I say this? Okay. Was a colleague of my mother. So the world is very much around. And um, it brings me, this kind invitation of yours give me, gives me the opportunity of reminding how interesting was he, it was to be here with you back in 1999 when I lectured on some issues related to, to what was at the time um, the uh, PhD thesis to be. I would also like to start by thanking my Romanian colleagues, the ambassador and my colleagues from the embassy, as well as my colleagues from Bucharest who took the pain of coming with me all through the way from Bucharest to Tel Aviv and then to Jerusalem, providing me fantastic insights and support to take my job to that happy end we all hope for. The same things go to you, Rodika. You're doing a great job for your country. And sometimes I wonder whether you're a Romanian or an Israeli. <laughs> We're now on the Mount Scopus, the Har Hatzofim, a respectable shrine for the Jewry and a symbolic place for the aspirations of the entire humanity. That very Hebrew name suggests a tie between us and the vision of this country, as well as to the history of the people, which is a part of the universal history and also part of the history of my country. Mount Scopus represents a vantage point that in the past has had strategic significance, and we all know that his meaning is Look out. But this is actually the cry we actually, this is actually the word that we should utter when calling back on our history. Look out for our history. This is the place who saw the Roman Emperor, the Spassianus, coming to Jerusalem. And this is the place where Vespasianus foresaw the destruction of the second temple. That episode that we sometimes invoke as to make a comparison with what has happened 70, 60, 70 years ago. This site represents the crossroad of time and geography, the crossroad between the Orient and the Occident. And it is because of this, because its meaning is renewed generation from generation, that I stand here with you as a resume of a generation whose main goal and responsibility is to preserve the vision of the common past and to build the image, the real image, of that episode that we are used to call the Shoah. It was only after the fall of the communist regime in Eastern Europe that the public opinion began to approach the Holocaust subject. More than 45 years after the event. While the democratic world was debating on this subject since the beginning and underlined in due time the ethic and the political conclusions. <coughs> Eastern European countries only began the exercise in a hard context of inherent convulsions of complex social, political restructuring processes. Without this clarifying 
it would be difficult to understand why the Holocaust wasn't so long considered a political and a social priority in my country. We now have, and we acknowledge this, that we have the moral duty to strive and more to make the future generations understand the, dim the dimension of the systematic crimes perpetrated against peoples and to turn those lessons that the past teaches us into means of preventing discriminatory action from ever happening again. I myself think candidly, and I hope I'm not wrong, that we have now the chance of becoming an example of good practice in Europe. And in promoting values such as tolerance, democracy, respect for human dignity, whose significance go beyond the borders of Europe and certainly reach worldwide. Assuming the fact that this episode, the Shoah, was recorded in different forms during the last decades of Romanian historiography and history writing, was, every, was in any case the zero level of all knowledge. Initially, almost all references to the Holocaust were removed, barely tolerated, or even forbidden, and when resurfaced, they reflected the myths of a new generation that was desperately seeking its absolution from responsibility. Comparative approaches were preferred, thus minimizing the number of victims and bringing the issue to a simple issue of statistical importance, digging into the moral significance of the Shoah was left to us There were plenty of voices crying out from the libraries, from the books, about what the Shoah meanings are. The exceptional work of Nava Samel, who was a daughter of Holocaust survivors, first published novels, collections of short stories, poetry, plays, focused on the shadow of the Holocaust on Israeli society. Her books have then been published in Romania, in Germany, elsewhere. The impressive work of Alexandru Sever, who's still living in Israel. But all these voices were difficult to hear because the distance, the cultural distance between the authors and those who ought to be readers, that distance was underlined by the bare fact that for 50 years the Shoah was never a cultural reference. When the memoirs literature came out, that very abundant source of information about the personal testimonies of survivors. Things started to change because the emotional wave was catching up Romanian readers. Let me, let me just briefly quote you some words from Sonia Palti's book, Jews Cross the Dniester, I hope we all know what it is about. It's been published in the 80s in Romania. And in its impact was astounding. She writes, I should have forgotten it all. I should have forgotten the nightmare. But it is not possible. It is beyond my power to forget. During long sleepless nights, during warm afternoons when I rest, the events that took place during my 14 months of exile are constantly resurfacing in my mind 
like a movie. When survivors cannot forget, it's those who are not in such a situation should not forget either. They're bound morally, ethically, because of their conscience, no matter what religion they have, to be deeply involved in the same process, calling those souls back again to life. This is the meaning of history in the end. When, and Professor Volovich knows what it is about far better than I do, I was a simple reader of it, and a backstage commentator, so to say. When Mihai Sebastian's journal came out, endless pages of comments came out too. Ears, ears of interest into mere 350 pages of direct testimony of that reflecting that part of Romania I myself never knew roughly anything about. It was that part of history that left scars. No grandiose triumphant arches no parades in the streets, but people being clubbed in the streets, people being amassed in crowds as to clean the deshes of a world they were in, people unable to play in the limelight of their own theatres, people unable to read the books they wanted. Children that could not go to school. That very testimony, Leon, if I may say, turned on the light. That was the switch the Romanian culture needed. What is the stage of the historical demarche nowadays in Romania? Certainly I would call upon your attention the work of the Historical Commission to the Holocaust. You have seen the final report and I'm, I'm glad to, to, to take this advantage and to, to, to offer the library of the center some copies of the final report. I'm glad that this report, that report was printed, came out in a publishing house in my hometown, as I am glad that Jean Ancel, I can't see him here in the, uh, in the hall. He's here. Um, was kind enough to accept publishing his books the same publishing house in the collection that I have the honor of coordinating. We're coming back to terms with that history that was obscured for so long by while bringing those books that you know more about them in the early 80s, bringing them back to the eyes of those readers who are thirsty about the real Romanian history. This is not petty education. This is not Sunday school. This is that process of coming to terms with your own history as one comes to terms with his own identity. Early in the morning when shaving. No joke about this. It's about seeing that face that it's wrinkled, seeing that face that has a lot of holes in it for that very moment of truth in the morning. And I call upon the morning of Romanian historiography, therefore. Setting up that International Commission, the fact that the report became a countrywide, a nationwide bestseller, reflects, in my opinion, the irreversibility and the progress achieved in the process Romania has undertaken 
undertaken for assuming her past. Moreover, I think that we are now committed to fully observe the recommendations of the Commission. And I think that assuring a follow-up to its work is as important as printing its work properly. In a few time, there will be an Institute for Holocaust Studies in Romania that will be in charge with gathering and, public and, and, and printing, editing, documents regarding the Shoah, and promote educational activities related to the Holocaust. It is my hope that this institute may be in a form of a section in a larger institute dealing with Jewish-Romanian history, or as an institute as such, would raise up to the expectations of both historians, professionals, academics, and average Romanians interested in the history of their own country. But this is, and I will just drift away from the speech, this is very much an issue devoted to those who have time to read and time to teach, mostly to the teachers. A couple of minutes ago, half an hour ago, I was with President Katsav, and we were discussing about these issues. He was kind enough to take his time to devote his attention to the Shoah studies, I was delivering him what we have succeeded to do. And I told him, look, we concentrate now on teaching the teachers. We're trying to make a format of education that will help professors, teachers, in the secondary schools to raise the level of awareness about the history of the country, thus making younger generations pay attention to real history, pay attention to the value of documents, pay attention to what their parents usually try to put aside from their own memory. And President Katsav bluntly asked a question which for a while let me speechless. What would you do with the parents? And it is true. That question has, is very meaningful. What should one do with the parents beyond asking them to read, beyond steering their interest for the history they willingly or unwillingly have forgotten? This is not psychoanalysis. This is not the work of a shrink. This is very much what people should know about the history. This is the process. So what we do for the parents? Shall we ask the children when going back home to tell the parents, do you know what has happened when you were young? I wonder who would pay attention to such a childish, in the very proper sense of the word, childish question. For the parents, as for the offsprings, we erect the monument. And it's high time, 60 years after the conclusion of the Second World War, that both the dead and the survivors, as well as a nation that grapples through the ruins communism brought her down to, deserves a monument in the midst of the capital, honoring those who have lost, as I was saying, their life and their happiness. That monument, with institutes, with museums, with new scientific approaches, would give you perhaps a glimpse on what remembrance and show are would mean from now on in Romania. I won't, I won't draw longer onto one of the facts that somehow would give you now an idea about the interest in Jewish studies in Romania. 
when Professor Wickstrick and then Professor Volovich pointed out that there were few of us who ventured into studying Jewish issues in the early 90s, I can now tell you, and I think I, it's the first time I go in public with this, that although Romania was democratic by that decade, in the 90s, I myself had to suffer a lot because of my interest in Jewish studies. It was difficult to make people understand, even in my hometown university, how important and how interesting these issues are and how consistent the research would be and how important the fruits of our work while sweating over documents, while trying to decipher forgotten writings, how significant that simple effort, individual effort would be, not only for scientific purposes, but when healing the mentalities. And I remember when someone came up to me and said, you're a traitor. And that was back in 1994. And you should be brought to justice. And you should be looked upon by the police because you're corroding the very nature of our nation. I said to myself, if things go this way, and some of my fellows start being unnerved or angry at me simply because of this, I'm certainly on the right path. And I still cling to that stubbornness of mine. A textbook for an optional course called Jewish History, the Holocaust, was approved by the Ministry of Education and Research and will come out until the month of October, until the end of October 2005. As an optional lecture in the curricula of the Romanian secondary schools, a quarter, one out of four Romanian pupils asked to be registered with this course. It's optional. It's not compulsory. There is an interest into this. This is a, a sign of healthiness. I take this advantage when, when going into issues that would reflect how interest has shifted from indifference to interest. I would take this opportunity and thank someone who's, who happens not to be with us tonight, simply because he, simply because he cannot, for objective reasons, and this is Mike Shafir. I truly hope that when you go back home, you just devote a warm thought for this friend of ours. He needs our prey, and I think that you will join me in this. Mike Shafir was so instrumentally important in writing the final report. He was devoted to this, and because he's devoted, and this is, this is what happens with emotional people like myself, um, we sometimes find out that we only have one heart in the proper sense of the word. It sometimes stops. All these initiatives concentrate the attempts of the last decade to take responsibility for the history of the Romanian Shoah. The historical research, therefore, has a double value. First, it concludes a period marked by singular voices that were concerned with writing the chapter on the Shoah in the Romanian historiography and by peripheral and strongly overshadowed polemics on the phenomenon 
if we are to compare them to other fundamental debates involving the civil society. Second, it closes a relatively long sequence by addressing difficult subjects that were avoided for a long time, such as the Jewish history, the inner national development of Romanian anti-Semitism, the territoriality of the, of the Holocaust, the real succession of historical events, the n number of victims for those who are interested in statistics, and last but not least, the political responsibility. The recent studies in the past three, four years appears a huge, yet not exhaustive, collection of writings, attempts to publish documents, and testimonies on the Romanian Holocaust. Historians were in the first rank here, as well as survivors, writers, artists, and journalists. This also means that Romania, like some other countries in Europe, marks the beginning of the process of analyzing the nature of contemporary anti-Semitism and its connections to threats, to the new threats to global security. I believe that we have proved our political courage to assume the past. We're not seeking a reconciliation. We're seeking, most of all, to see what has happened there and take the responsibility of it. All these steps, the political class, the academic milieus, teachers and students alike, average Romanians, point out to the real meaning, to the medical meaning, of democracy in Romania. And needless to say for, for those who asked me several times why should we go so deep into looking for guilt, I tell them that it's not guilt that is a part of our national identity, on the contrary. It's how we divide our past into good deeds and things that we can be proud of and things that we should hate for the simple fact that they shouldn't be ever given a chance to be repeated. That tragic experience compels us to continue effort, the efforts for the last years and to assume the responsibilities derived from the past events. I myself strongly believe that the history of the Jewish communities as a whole knowing its multiple aspects. The history of the anti-Semitism, the history of the Shoah, are interrelated, and they should be seen of one single process of cultural restoration, that it hasn't been yet explored, but offers a chance of putting Romania's history back on track in its entirety. And I would conclude with one simple remark that would address an issue which is dear to me and dear to you. When I think about the Shoah, when I think about historical writing on the Holocaust, or when I address historical writing on the history of Jewish communities, I, I feel like I'm depriving the issue of its very tangent, tangible nature. I will explain you what I mean by this. When me, when I have to look for a certain name or into the history, the biography of a certain Jewish rabbi that might have lived in Yash or elsewhere in Moldova. While looking for data, supplementary data, when, I'm, when I go to, 
to the cemetery. And I see that the civilization as well, the history of the community, lies underground in a thick napping of flowers and grass that leaves no open, no, no light to go open onto the stone. When I see that whatever is heritage becomes slabs of stone with no care for it. That is where I see the Holocaust coming back again. I think that in this very respect, you, my dear friends, you shouldn't leave the historians alone. Thank you. Thank you so much. I would like to thank uh, the Foreign Minister on behalf of everyone for such a thoughtful, sobering, and moving, and very personal, I think, address, something which came from the heart, and which I think rings so true with regard to the problem of how you face the present and the future. You can only really face it and move forward without, through confronting all the myths and the taboos and the silence, the silence which for so long cast its shadow. And I, I see that you've also given us a great source of encouragement here in Jerusalem because there are some people in this country who simply do not believe that you can combine Judaica and Politica. <laughs> in fact, the very idea they are allergic to. And I think you've, you've shown us through your own example, your own study, reflection, and practice. Not only can it be combined, but it can be a source of wisdom. Our tradition is a source of wisdom. If only we knew how to look for it and our history teaches us so much in terms of your identity, the identity of Europeans, but for ourselves we also need to take to heart the lesson which uh, you have reminded us of. Um, the Foreign Minister has a very busy schedule and I think that we are best advised to leave it there and to reflect on those words and I think it, your visit really has been much more than simply a lecture, as, as you suggested. It is something that I think bodes well for the future. Also relations between our two countries and between the Jewish world and Romania. And I very much hope the new generation, your generation, is the one that will help us to move forward in the direction that you have that you have indicated. So I would like to thank uh, all participants in this evening, Professor Berkovier, uh, my colleague Leon Volovich, all members of the Sassoon Center who helped to make this possible. The audience was kind enough to come here on a hot day on the 4th of July, the American Day of Independence, and to show where our priorities really lie. So thank you very much and thank you above all to the Foreign Minister. And here are the books. Wonderful. I'm sorry, I have to leave. This is the problem. No, it's probably better. We, 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 Ramon la librería.
la, la bibliotecă, pardon. Nu am să vă semnez eu pe o carte care este un rezultat de mai mult. Ce faceți? 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 Ce faceți?